We're back with another video about the Cozy 6. We've talked about it several times on the channel. The last time I spoke about it, we were talking about them bringing out the Cozy 10 and how they're already oversizing heat pumps with the Cozy 6 and really they should look for a smaller one. And then we now have a new video, which again, you are sending me links to. So you can stop sending me links to this video because I've already commented. Scroll down in the comments and you'll see. I am watching EV Nick, watching his journey with the Cozy 6. He's currently the best source of Cozy 6 data that we have. There's just nothing out there. So I'm watching these videos with a lot of intrigue and um, trying to figure out as much as I can. And hopefully that octopus have got everything right because we need this to succeed for heat pumps to be rolled out at scale and en masse so this video came out from nick um talks about how his cop of his cozy six was doing pretty poorly and um and how octopus went about fixing it oh i'm not gonna make you sit through it and watch it again um nine minutes go and watch it on his channel worth watching you can see what the challenges were how they've overcome it and how octopus are dealing with it and I applaud Octopus for their approach, getting it done. But here's a few of my thoughts. It's our first look at Cozy 6 results, and uh, I've set up my screen incorrectly. So the first issue was that the COP was low. This was mainly because of flow temperature and because Nick had basically tweaked it too low. And I know previously in my other video I said fl low flow temperature is always better. Um, but that for the physical heat pump itself, if it can... Um, basically get rid of all of that heat that it's trying to pump in the system then yes that's fine but if your house is already warm and your radiators can't shed that heat into the building then there's no point going lower with the flow temperature and you will end up with cycling and everything else so um the interesting thing that he alluded to there that we we learn about the cozy six was that he was able to change two flow temperatures so he was able to manually input the weather compensation curve that he wanted i know some manufacturers do that they can allow you to adjust the bottom point and a top point and sometimes a middle point valent that i'm familiar with they don't they just you're allowed to pick one number and then valent says this is the curve that the heat pump will um, operate on so he chose a curve that he said 35 degrees when it was cold so if we look at that he's roughly looking at somewhere like a 0.4 heat curve which in valent terms would be really just underfloor heating only unless you've got massive radiators or a really well insulated house or something but typically uh, most of the valent heat pumps operate 0.6 0.7 that sort of area so it's quite a low heat curve that he set that and also it was interesting that he said it was 30 when it was warm and 35 when it was cold which is quite a shallow heat curve compared to what the valence operate at anyway enough of this comparison there's a few issues with that first of all is the modulation like i say if the heat pump can't shed the heat through the emitters through the radiators or underfloor heating as your case may be then the all it can do is switch off there's no point at running because it can't turn down the compressor any lower to put the heat in any more slowly. The, the minimum modulation rate on the Cozy 6 we expect is about 2 kilowatts. And so once it can't get rid of that 2 kilowatts, all it can do is it can shut off. It, it measures the flow and the return temperatures. And so it will know... Um, this heat isn't going anywhere the the delta between these narrows and it gets really 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 close and it it basically shuts off and we don't know yet until we see the full data exactly how octopus are managing that situation so emitters and nick says in his video that uh potentially he doesn't have uh, big enough radiators or a big enough home to shed all of that heat uh, but you know the there will be an issue that if you turn down the um, weather compensation curve too much that your house might get cold house warmth is an issue so we also learned that he already had a volumizer in the system um, because octopus were clearly aware that there wasn't enough system volume in terms of the the water the 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 fluid that's pumping around the system so they added a volumizer which um i can't remember how many liters he said was it 50 liters something like that so that's a good couple of decent sized radiators depending on how you calculate and uh, 
what you're comparing it to. So second is the heat loss, and he brings up the heat loss issue, which I've been beaten to death here. So it's a six kilowatt heat pump. He's got a four kilowatt heat loss at his design temperature. I don't know what that is. I presume where he is in the country, that's probably minus three degrees. So they're saying that it's around four kilowatts at minus three degrees that the heat pump needs to push in. So the we we suspect that the heat pump will modulate down to two kilowatts and uh, most of the heating season he won't need two kil kilowatts if his house is uh, four kilowatts in the worst conditions. He suspects his heat loss is even lower um, and it doesn't take a lot in terms of air change rates to bring that heat loss uh, calculation down to maybe three kilowatts to knock... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30% off a heat loss calculation. So that would be interesting to know. And I'm sure Octopus must have ways from their monitoring system to uh, use a dynamic uh, measure measurement to uh, dynamically calculate the heat loss calculation. The third thing, and this is really a critical thing, is the flow rate. And this, to me, seems like this is probably the biggest failure on Octopus's part. And um, I don't know if they preemptively put the volumizer in as a kind of experiment. We just don't know. And then maybe they had always provision there to uh, let's repipe this as a buffer tank because we might have issues with the flow rate, potentially. When well, you've got 10 millimeter plastic micro bore, um, you need to really be doing your calculations. And secondary to that, I don't know how many meters of external pipe work he's got, but it looks like a good 25, 30 meters, maybe even more than that. Um, that's quite a lot of external pipe work. Not necessarily the end of the world. I'd love to see how well insulated it is and get a thermal imaging camera on that, see how much um, energy he's losing through that long run of pipe work. The pump inside the um, inside the uh, Cozy 6 should be plenty enough for a long primary pipe run, but to overcome such a long pipe run and then microbore pipe work throughout the house i don't know the extent of it <clears throat> i don't know if it's just 10 millimeter tails to the radiators if it's just drops i don't know if he's if he's got main uh main uh system like 22 mil primaries running through the <clears throat> property and then the 10 mils branch off we don't know we don't know any of that but it's still possible to calculate all of these things so has the cozy six got a weak pump <clears throat> probably not um, this is probably an extreme case, but clearly Octopus Energy know the specifications of the pump. They know how many meters head. They could easily do the calculations. I mean, even an enthusiast like me, I can easily do the calculations for the external pipes, which I presume will run in 28 mil um, copper pipe. The internal pipe work, you'd have to do a little bit of guesstimation, but they, if they've taken apart a bit of the house, then they could probably do some good, good uh, calculations. So they've added a buffer tank and they've added a second circulation pump. So now they are hydraulically separating the uh, uh, the heat pump circuit and then the heating circuit inside the building. I'm not against buffer tanks. I know there are a lot of anti-buffer tank people there. We've got a buffer tank in our house. It works okay. Um, we're lucky that the flow rates aren't massively different, so we don't have a lot of distortion, um, but they are kind of uh, idiot-proof. You you can put them in and the the house side will just work out its flow rate and do what it needs to do and the heat pump can just kind of do what it needs to do and work out its side. I know that's an oversimplification. There's a lot more to it than that. But um, it's, a, it's a great way to kind of look to resolve this thing. The real issue I have is around the marketing claims of the Cozy 6. They've constantly been saying that this is just a quick like you know, plug it in and go, really easy system. It's not going to need loads of upgrades. It's not going to need huge amounts of retrofit. And here we're seeing buffer tanks and we're seeing, um, you know, coming back for remedial works and we're seeing that the Cozy 6 actually doesn't have enough meter head, you know, a powerful enough pump to overcome the resistance of the pipe work. We're seeing that also the Cozy 6 doesn't modulate down low enough for a lot of these modern properties to plug it in and go. So 
My main issue is not with how Octopus have carried out the installation, it's the marketing claims really, and I think that's something that they should look to resolve. Um, so we've learned about the, the compressor, it can clearly only modulate, even these inverter driven compressors, they can only modulate down typically to 30-ish percent of their maximum output. So if it's rated at six kilowatts, then maybe it can modulate down just below two kilowatts. And we've learned that the circulation pump is not enough for a long primary run and 10 mil microbore. A lot of people have been told that the Cozy 6 can't be installed on microbore. And I wonder if this is a, a, an issue to do with it. Anyway, 99% of you, as always, won't like the video and won't leave a comment. Thank you to the 1% who do. And 96% aren't subscribed. You'll see me on the next video. I don't know why this last slide's in here. Goodbye.